welcome back to Perth City Talks and we are here for the event, a play that narrates the experiences of people who witnessed the massacre in Norway 2011. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So um, I actually began theatre as a musician. I played saxophone uh, and I was really lucky that my mum was a music teacher. So there was always music in my life. And from playing saxophone, I ended up playing in a number of theatre performances. And I was then asked to audition for a show, got in. I ended up being a comedian for a while and then ended up directing theatre and becoming a school teacher. So I've had a few, I've worn a few hats in my time. Can you share with us your good experiences and directing and acting? Yes, yeah, sure. So um, I've had a number of really terrific experiences. I love making new work. So I love working from script like we have done on the events, but I really love working with actors to create brand new work and devising work and did that earlier this year we had a show that was called you know we belong together that was about um, a woman who really wants to be on home and away she Julia Hales she's worked with Dada for a number of years she's she lives with Down syndrome and it was one of the most thrilling new works to make because we were putting a really fresh voice in front of an audience and what was wonderful was that the audience loved it so I think we're one of the things that I find exciting about working in theatre right now is that audiences are ready for fresh and different perspectives and um, we're, we're much more inclusive I think as a society than we were say 10 years ago so I'm glad I'm working in theatre right now. So where do you get your inspiration from being an artistic director? Um, everywhere actually like I'll go and see if it, I think as an artistic director you never quite turn your mind off from your job or I don't anyway so a, a conversation that we're having might inspire an idea I'm reading a book and it turns into a theatre idea um, I'll go to the gallery and see images that I'll want to then put into our kind of printed program so um, the world provides those ideas but I think it's because when you're really uh, motivated slash assessed about what you do you can't help but see the world through that filter and I'm constantly sort of seeing the world through the lens of um, the work that we're putting on stage here at Black Swan. saying back in 2016 that I look forward to the time when this play wasn't relevant, when there were no more shootings in schools or whatever else that were fresh in our minds that make the play topical. That time is yet to come. So I feel like it is still, years after being written and in, with many events that have followed, a very compelling and relevant, and sadly very relevant play. And musically, what interests me about it is that it's never the same on any given nights because we have a different choir performing on every any given show. It keeps it interesting. Each choir brings something different. They all bring their own song that they sing in the start of the play and they all have something special that they bring to us. And for me, to meet all of these different people is a real pleasure and part of the challenge of it. So what is your role in all of this? I'm the musical director and that largely means rehearsing the choirs. So we rehearse every day. We rehearse before every performance. They get a short rehearsal where they get given their lines, they get placed on stage. They've learnt the songs in their own rehearsal, but really they get a very small window of time to be prepared for this performance and that's part of what makes it thrilling. It's meant to be raw and authentic and a bit unpolished. And that's the opposite of what we usually do, both in musical performance and in theatre. So that's what also keeps it interesting as we go on. Can you tell us a bit about your background? Sure. I'm, I was you know, trained as a classical pianist and then uh, after leaving school I started becoming interested in theatre. And the work I do in theatre is not just doing musical theatre, which is what most people like me will do. I love doing plays. I love working with spoken text, and so with the company that's put on this play, Belvoir Street Theatre from Sydney, with Black Swan, I did Hamlet before, and I loved that. The next thing I'll do will be another play, and I also do uh, musicals as well. So the last big musical I did was Muriel's Wedding in Sydney. 
And then I also have worked a lot with choirs. So I've spent a lot of the last 10 years with both youth and adult choirs, everywhere from Sydney or from the middle of big cities to in the outback, like in outback New South Wales and in remote regions of Queensland. And, and that is still a source of great joy to me. What's behind the shooter, the boy? His reasons behind it, I think he's a male in a contemporary society that feels like he doesn't have a voice and doesn't have a purpose. And so I think, unfortunately, he sees or finds a cause and sees a kind of opportunity where he thinks he can be remembered for doing something that's, you know, ultimately a really heinous act. But, you know, it's that kind of thing of trying to assert yourself and, and, and be remembered, even if the, the event you're being remembered for is kind of um, abhorrent. I'm an orphan, I'm a narcissist, I'm a psychopath, I'm a void into which we are drawn. I am sick, dead, lost and alone. A lot of people look up to you as a role model and uh, they would love to know about, a bit about your background from your childhood, if you've got parents who are into acting that you know made you decide to be an actor or something like that. No, my parents weren't involved in the arts. My dad was a, well, my dad was a printmaker for the newspaper and then that kind of went bust and then he was a teacher and then my mum uh, was a pharmacist. So no, there was nothing there. I think like we, my dad, is an oil painter, like he paints, he has a studio and paints. But um, nah, it, it's funny, it wasn't kind of like something that um, was in the family at all. It was just more, everyone shares like a pretty dry sense of humour in our house and, and my nan was a really good storyteller, but like that's kind of as far as it, as it goes, yeah. Have you got any message for the viewers on how they can accomplish their dreams and desires? It's really interesting because I think, um, particularly as a woman, like I'm currently the only female artistic director of a state theatre company in the country. I would love to see that change and I would say particularly to, uh, to young women that it is absolutely a possibility. In terms of motivation and drive, I know that I came from a background of independent theatre so I sort of went through the slog that I know a lot of people are in of making your own work, funding your own work, um, putting things on. Um, in fringe festivals, small venues, sometimes in non-venues. So I put a show on in a car and I put a show on in an apartment um, and at a roller skate rink. So I think if you have the desire and you have the motivation uh, to work as an artist, you will somehow kind of like water through cracks find a way. So um, just keep at it. Persist. Yep. So what's next for Johnny Carr? Well, after the, I'm having a baby at the end of September. So Congrats. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, my partner's having a baby, a Katie. Um, so we're kind of gearing up for that. So there's <laughs> there's been a couple of jobs come and we're just trying to navigate them with time. Um, uh, yeah, so that's um, it's going to be interesting. I'm very excited. <laughs> so uh, what's your aspiration for the future as an actor? I think to continue working on pieces that kind of are interrogating like slices of our society that we don't we don't often talk about. I think that's what's great about this show that it's kind of this content that's really kind of ugly and confronting and and, and shaping it in a new way and presenting kind of multi uh, or many different kind of perspectives on on something like this and so you know work like that that's kind of saying something and it's kind of bringing a new perspective to ideas that we bash around that's always exciting yeah what's it called destroying angels okay 
the event is going to be touring around Australia uh, and you're going to be a part of the touring. Are you going to shed more lights on it so our audience can understand what the touring is all about? Yeah, so, um, you know, this play has already done quite a few towns. It was part of a few festivals and now it's being remounted here in Perth. So we've got a, um, because the director that directed the show is now the director of Black Swan Theatre. So she invited us to come and do the show again. And then within that, then we go to go down to Melbourne again and do, do the play there, which is already performed there. And then we go back to Sydney and we go out to Wollongong and then we tour around to some small regional places. There's a fund fun shows that they think have got potential to tour. And so often it's small casts or it's an interesting play and this has both. And also within each of those communities you access their community choirs to be part of the show so it's a great community involvement. So how do you feel when you're on stage performing? Ah, that's a big question. You sometimes feel a lot of things. You know, what you hope to feel is um, free and sometimes you are and sometimes you aren't. And thank you for giving us the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You've been watching Perth City Talk for the event, and I am Tony ETC.